This is a 20 minute training session right. with Serenity. So this is a very windy day. If you've seen the background, there is a storm rolling in, the wind is cold, there was a little bit of thunder. Um, and remember, she, this mare is normally very nervous, very buddy sour. We are away from her friends, but we have been gradually working on this head down, both at Liberty and doing it with just a halter on. Um, no, sorry for the delay here. I forgot to put the GoPro on. So I'm attaching that to my helmet to turn that on. Um, so this is not Serenity's first time clicker training or first time working on head down. For head down, this is about her sixth or seventh training session total. Most of the training sessions are 10 minutes or less. We are close to that. Um, we're doing this with clicker training. Um, I'm not, I haven't use any whips or downward pressure it's been shaping and initially we started at Liberty with no halter um, I just find that she feels comfortable with the halter on um, and uh, it works really well for us so you can see she's holding the duration of the head down for a long time um, almost a full circle now going to uh, in the direction going to the left or counterclockwise Um, good. And then what we've been working on the last couple sessions was asking for a speed up without uh, jumping into it and by keeping the head level or low, which is what I've been working on. Um, and she's doing really well with that. Uh, because so this mare has had several injuries in the last, oh, last year she had a couple. Before I even bought her, she had an injury. Um, and uh, she's also currently pregnant. Um, and she's always had a little bit of a weird movement. So I want to help her get stronger on line uh, to prep her kind of for riding. She's always been very high headed. So this ability to drop her head is phenomenal for her and good at, at building muscle. So here, just clicking, you can hear the click really easily, which is why I'm leaving the audio on even with the wind noise, because you can hear that. Now, you'll know she puts her head down. She's not looking to eat grass yet. Um, initially, she keep it to short sessions because they will get bored and you'll find that they're eating grass. Now, that was phenomenal. Actually, I'm going to go ahead and stop this and go back because I want you to see how she transitioned from a walk to a faster speed and kept that head low. Here it is in regular time, and then I'll show the slow motion. Um, I just clicked, and I'm using my hips to indicate that I want her to go faster. So here it is in slow motion. I'm going to cluck like this and then use my hips and ask her to go a little bit faster and look at her put her keep it level and then stretch her head down which is what I am looking for um, with her doing this um, to help her start using her hind end a little bit more now she doesn't have to keep her head that low but that's where she seems comfortable keeping it right now as we move along I'm gonna try to ask her to to give me not more collection, but better movement. But right now, we're just looking for that responsiveness. And again, that nice low head. Um, really, really like how she's doing. Now, I'm trying to keep her <laughs> from running over my dog. Now, she normally is really good with dogs, but as she gets more and more pregnant, she likes dogs less and less. So uh, you'll see that um, I yell at her a couple times just for pinning her ears at my dog because I don't want her to bother him. I'm also doing a better job this time at stopping and letting her think about it. Now she's really content to chew quickly and keep going, but I'm making myself slow down. So you see, as soon as I move my body, she's right there moving with me. So here I'm trying to ask her for kind of a little bit bigger. With her, as with some horses, they as soon as they speed up, they get excited and toss their head and, and want to go fast. And I'm wanting to encourage her to stay calm and relax through those transitions, um, which will translate hopefully under saddle as well, because I have videos of this mare and she used to go from a walk into like a big trot with uh, her head up, no slowness. Um, and so in a, probably a few weeks after I work with her a little bit more, I'm gonna show you a video from four years ago and then show you a video after just doing this head down training. Um, and 
there's been almost zero riding in between, like maybe two rides. But this head down training that I've been doing is helping her not just on the ground, but under saddle as well. Again, I taught this without using a whip. Um, the early sessions were without a halter at all. And we're completely at liberty. This to the right or clockwise is our harder direction. So we are working. Now see, she stopped to sniff something. My response isn't to pull her. Now that was my fault. I let the rope get too long and she stepped on it. Uh, be very careful, especially in the beginning, not to let that happen uh, because your horse may not want to put their head down because they'll feel pain, which is actually a really good reason to do it at liberty. So she's putting her head down and yes, there is grass under her nose, but she's not trying to eat it. Uh, so it may be easier for you to do this in a place without grass, um, but know that you can train this anywhere, even when there is grass, things like that. So here I was asking her to speed up, and I'm wanting her to speed up, but keep her head down. Right there she did it, so I clicked for that, which was really nice. And again, I'm not looking for her to keep her nose on the ground all the time. Like when I ride her, that's not where I want her to keep it. But that stretch down is, is really good and it's going to help keep her stronger, especially since I know she has um, these injuries in, to her hips um, and her back left leg. Uh, I want, I wasn't sure if she's, so she got herself injured uh, a little over a year ago and I wasn't even sure how sound she would be. Um, and so I'm trying to do a lot of this groundwork to see what her soundness um, is going to be. Um, in a little bit, I'm gonna hop on and ride her, and you'll see that you know for a very short ride, she seems sound, but I don't know how her leg is gonna hold up. So here I'm clucking, but I'm kind of using my hips to indicate how I want her to move, rather than using a whip or a lead rope or pressure from behind, even though that's how I was taught, and it's very tempting to ask the horse to speed up by using a whip or using a rope or using your hand to tap them. And I'm trying to use instead my body language and a verbal cue, I, I cluck but I try to add the energy, keep my shoulders pointed in the direction I want her to go. I keep my head turned toward her mostly so that the GoPro continues to see her. Normally I'd keep my head a little bit more forward, but I'm trying to make sure the GoPro has some kind of view. Right there, she dropped her head as she moved forward in the trot and I praised her. Excellent, exactly what I'm looking for. Now you're gonna notice this whole training session is 20 minutes um, and for her, we started out with five minute training sessions and that was all she could handle. And she probably could even do more than 20 minutes, but that's all I look for at the beginning is, you know, five minutes, uh, speed up to 10, things like that. Um, it, it start slow. A lot of horses won't have the attention span to keep doing this. And one of the things you'll see is they'll start looking around, they'll start trying to eat grass. I worked with the mare yesterday, just the very beginning of this head down and she did really well for about five minutes and after about five minutes all she wanted to do was eat grass and she was clearly telling me that I'm, I, I want to be done concentrating on this and again this is a mare that normally would be high-headed and very upset because of the wind and the horse is not being right there um, and she's doing super well right now Again, a high rate of reinforcement, a high rate of stopping and letting her rest. Sometimes she's the one that wants to go, not me, and she's asking to keep going with the training session, um, but I'll, I'll stop and, and have her just finish chewing. <clears throat> now, in just a minute, um, you're gonna see, I was trying to get her to canter <laughs> by using my body language. Um, she's not quite ready for that, and it's a little bit muddy, so that's fine to hold off on that. In a little bit, she's going to spook at something. And what's fascinating to me, and we'll watch that spook and we'll watch it in slow motion, is how she doesn't 
hit me. Um, she nearly hits my head, but you can see her pivoting to not crash into me um, as she spooks. Now, when a horse spooks, um, and I'm like to have a lead rope like this, I'll give them almost the entire lead rope to settle down, um, to jump and move away. Um, when they get close to the end, I will hold on and hope that they'll stop. Uh, it's more of a safety thing because I don't want them to spook and run around. But I'll give them as much room as they can rather than trying to hold them tight. If you go back and watch this video, you'll notice how loose the lead rope is. Now when I'm leading my horses around my property or anywhere, I am not holding the lead rope by, uh, by the snap or putting my hand near the halter. I carry a loose lead rope, not so much that it's dragging, but enough that there is some movement. Uh, I do not want to hold the lead rope tight. That actually gives the horse more of a claustrophobic feeling and they're more likely to jump. I think it's good practice to learn to actually let go of the lead rope, to keep it loose, train the horse to stay next to you, but it gives them some freedom to, to look around, uh, to not feel like you're holding them so tightly, and you'll, you often have fewer behavioral problems with a little bit of training. So this is kind of an all-around session that I would often do, um, just do a few different things. Um, We've been working on training her to, to step over, um, and she likes doing it. We're still just working on it, so it's nice and relaxed. And here she lines up really nicely, lets me hop on. Um, and I, when I get on a horse, if I have food with me, I always click and treat for them standing still for me to get on. Now, she didn't do perfect because she wanted to move around, but keep in mind, it's a very extremely windy day with the weather changing. Um, she feels very energetic, but in control. So what I'm looking for mostly is for her to put her head down. So I'm doing this by, um, a lot of times it's just giving her a loose rein and saying head down. And if she drops her head, I click and reward. So basically a lot of what I did on the ground, I, I just yelled at her for, for pinning her ears at, at Cloud, my dog. Um, There, see how she dropped her head? I clicked and rewarded. So that's really, really what I'm looking for, is to encourage that head down under saddle. Now a lot of people watch the head down part on the ground and they say, well, how do I transfer it under saddle? And uh, the nice thing is I've just spent the last, the, you know, quite a the last few sessions with her training her to drop her head. And so uh, I get on and she immediately starts doing some of the same things as dropping her head. Um, and also I love that generally when she speeds up here, she does it nice and gradually and keeps her head low or level, uh, which makes me really happy because I know when I first rode her a few years ago, um, she was very high headed, very, would lunge into that faster speed. Again, clicked for the head down. Right now I'm feeding a uh, pelleted feed. I just have, give her a little small handfuls. Uh, when I click, that's her reward. So I'm not actually doing anything to really ask her to drop her head. I just say head down and I'm kind of just waiting. I am riding in a bitless bridle and, and steering with that as needed. But I'm mostly just waiting. See how loose the reins are? And here I'm actually, she actually neck reined like super well. I have no idea how she knew how to neck rein. So I actually praised um, and clicked for her turning so nicely. Um, she just either felt the shift in balance or I don't know what. She's not super well trained. I'm not asking her to speed up there. I was asking her to stay slower. There, she's just speeding up a little bit too much. Um, that was a good stop. Um, you can definitely tell she's not as focused on me as when we're on the ground, but that's fairly normal. Um, but she's also not just off staring at the distance. You can see her ears are, will flick back um, to listen. And so she did such a good job there that I wanted to hop off for that. I, look at that's very, very short. That was, I think, less than five minutes of riding.
maybe only just a couple. And I want her to have a really good experience riding, that it's calm. Um, I know that as I ride her a little bit more, she is going to do some big spooks most likely. Um, and that's, that's okay. I'm okay with that. So here we're going to do some Liberty work, just a little tiny bit. Um, she's been all warmed up using just the halter and lead rope, but it's the exact same thing, except I have less stuff in my hand. Now there's that big spook I was talking about. My dog crunched down on a stick. Now we're going to watch that in slow motion. Watch her jump. She jumps over me, lifts her head so she doesn't whack me and comes immediately back. So let's watch that again in slow motion. All right, she's very calm, has her head down which again is wonderful. I just gave her a treat. My dog picks up a stick, moves toward her as he crunches. She jumps up, moves her head so she doesn't hit me, and then turns immediately and comes back. Um, now notice I didn't jump or move around and I was very quick to reward her for coming back. Um, that's as important um, as what the horse does is what you do, that you learn to stay calm even when they spook. I was super impressed that when she jumped to get away, she did not knock me over or even, I think she barely touched me. Anyway, stuff like this is why if you're around horses, you should be calm and you should be a good rider because stuff like this can happen just out of the blue and happen almost with no warning, um, even though right before that she was calm and relaxed. <laughs> Now, um, I really like that even after that spook, she very quickly settled right back into working on head down. And again, we're at liberty, so um, she can leave any time. There's lots of grass in this pasture. The gate is actually open, so she can leave any time she wants. I love the low head. She's doing just so well. Um, now... One thing that we'll be talking about next is how to add distance because she stays very close to me. Generally, she's very good about not crashing into me, but we will be talking about that in an upcoming video. And again, this video and all my other videos, I want this to help you. I want it to encourage you. I want you to build that relationship with your horse. If you want more videos like this that are more just like, what do I do during a training session? Um, I have a Facebook group. Um, that it's $50 to join, $50 uh, one-time fee to join um, <laughs> the Facebook group and to get videos like this. In the warmer months, there'll be a lot more content as I'm working with horses, um, whether it's a GoPro or videos like this. And in the winter months, uh, I tend to be doing more traveling and, I'm, and the weather's just yucky because I live in northern Illinois, so the weather's just horrendous at times. So, um, but yeah, if you'd like to join that, the link is below. Uh, you can ask questions, post videos, and get lots of videos like this that are not on my YouTube channel, they're not on my blog. Um, they're videos you won't find anywhere else from working on the gate, canter, head down, um, liberty, and uh, even stuff like this where <laughs> she ran away, and then you're going to see in just a sec, she's going to come running right back, which I love. So there'll be liberty, there'll be some trick training. Um, and, uh, and if you would like to get more information about that, you can comment below or click on the link and, and get more information about that. Here is, um, the GoPro point of view, uh, once I take, after I ride and I take the bridle off. So we're going to show the Liberty part because I always think that's the most fun to see. Um, so, uh, basically this is my bitless bridle. Take that off toss it off. And again, looking for head down, looking for that connection. Here's the spook. She jumped over me there. And she came right back. Very nice. Way to stay with it. Good job. Uh, and again, I really like that she did that big spook and then settled right down, which is super important to me. Uh, 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 nope is that not that horses never spook, but that they come back from it, that they settle down and don't keep getting upset. And that's actually what I'm training here. It's not that this mare is the exception to the rule, but I've trained her and I wanna train all my horses um, to be brave, to be, um, they can get scared, but then they trust me and uh, hopefully 
will uh, continue to come back and settle down because I'm relaxed. I'm excited to see, since we're documenting most of this progress, uh, what she looks like, what her muscles look like um, after doing these for a few weeks. Um, I, I'm excited to see how, how she changes. <laughs> this videoing is definitely not the best that I've done. Nice, I like that. I like the effort that she's putting in there. Really nice. And here she just like bumps me with her hip. Back up. She thought I wanted her to move her hip over and not back up. Back up. Sometimes back she backs up really well. Um, she wasn't getting it this time, so I didn't worry too much about it. She drops her head down right away. I really like that. I like the little bit uh, bigger circle nice. there. That was really good. She took that bigger circle, but you could still see that she was connected to me and still paying attention. Give her time to chew. Okay. Moved away from her. I wanted to see if she'd come when I called, and she did. And she went past, like she's gonna run around, Good and girl. then she heard that click, and she looks around, but then she comes right back. 